Students call me Lama Linda, and I lead a Vajrayana Buddhist Sangha in Toronto called Awaken in Toronto. When you study Vajrayana Buddhism, one of the key components is recognizing that we are energy and that we impact each other. We have the potential to uh, impact each other with that energy. We're not solid like we think we are. We believe we are. And one of the key rituals that one uses in Vajrayana Buddhism is uh, going to Wangkur initiation ceremonies. They have a number of different names for them, but Wangkurs are really about empowering uh, a student. Um, for, um, a teacher empowers a student through attending of a ceremony. And once one is, uh, at, like, once, once a person attends a ceremony, one is authorized to then work with that particular energy and practice with that particular uh, energy. And this is often what's considered being granted permission uh, to uh, study a practice. And these practices are, are often um, what's called deities or archetypes, and they are um, particular energies and there's a number of different components to that energy that one practices. And I'm often asked this question about, what's this permission for? Is it really like, why do you need permission? And it's not, it's not permission by a person. It's not like going to the teacher and asking, you know, um, permission to use the washroom or something, where they say, yes, you can do it. But permission is really about requesting a seed to be planted. And if you don't have a seed planted, it's a little harder to access that energy. It's not impossible. Uh, there's a lot of random ways of accessing energy. But when one grants uh, permission to study a particular Vajrayana practice, a seed is planted by the teacher, by the Lama, by the guru, to the student. And then you know, it kind of makes sense that if that seed is planted, then it's a little bit more predictable the results of that practice are. Uh, so it's 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 not like there's uh, harm in practicing any of these secret tantric practices, but without the seed planted, uh, you're not it's you're you're not quite sure what's going to happen. You're not quite sure what's going to grow. So. I'm a gardener. I like to plant seeds. I thought I'd do an uh, analogy for you to say, you know, if you if you plant a seed in a garden, you know what that it's it's very important what that seed is. You know, if you want kale plants to grow, you need to plant you need you need to plant a kale seed, and it is most likely um, to blossom into a kale plant. Now, it's possible that your neighbor is also planting kale and some kind of a kale seed may blow into your garden and just by the thanks to Mother Nature, uh, often uh, seeds grow. But that's not, it's not very predictable and it's not very reliable and you, you don't want to sit around and waste your life hoping that seeds will, will come in. So if you attend a Wangkur Empowerment Ceremony, you are specifically... Um, going to uh, a ceremony requesting a particular type of energy, a particular um, uh, practice, one that you can specifically know what you're, what you're hoping is going to grow from that practice. So when one attends a one course ceremony, um, it, it's very clear that you're attending a one course ceremony because there's many rituals, and these rituals are all part of activating the energy within you. The energy is already there, but it's like lighting a spark. It's like lighting the uh, energy of the the seed or the spark that's within you, and from there, it's um, it can grow. And when one attends a one course ceremony all the five senses are activated. Now, if you study with me, you know there's really more than five senses. There's probably closer to 54 or so. Some of them are um, only with non-humans, and humans don't necessarily have 54. But you'd be amazed at how many senses are all activated at a one course ceremony. And, you know, when you attend um, a Wangkur, 
there's a visualization, there's an image that you'll be invited to study and to look at. And there's a, there's a being, there's always a human, uh, not a human, but like a, uh, an energy being that, that is in a human form um, that has a color, particular color. These are not races because the colors are more like green and orange and black, um, but they are energy colors. And you practice hearing, the hearing sense, by hearing a mantra that's chanted and the, chant, the, the sounds are chanted over and over and you can really hear them. You're, you know, it's okay to practice mantras uh, quietly in your own mind, but it's uh, super important to practice some of the mantras at least out loud so you can activate the, the hearing sense um, and make it more intense. Uh, the smell. There's always this, a particular smell from the, usually it's from the incense. There's a little bit from the saffron in the water. Uh, so there's a particular smell. I find it so comforting when I, when I smell it, because I know it's Wunkur time when, when, the, when there's a particular smell um, uh, that, uh, that, that one notices. And there's also taste. And in a Wunkur ceremony, there are times that one is invited to drink a nectar and you can you can taste it. Um, you can also take medicine where you eat um, medicine. Um, it it kind of looks like candy. It might have been candy once, but it turns into uh, medicine when it's been blessed and it holds a ritual um, uh, in terms of being turned into medicine for the body. And, and lastly, the fifth sense is the touch sense. And um, one holds mala beads, which are the little beads of a, of a string, 108 beads on a string. And one rubs these beads and repeats a mantra. And so there's a very uh, vis visceral kind of um, uh, feeling in the hands as you roll mala beads um, in your hands. And these, all the senses in this way are then activated in a Wankur ceremony. And one can remember it more easily. One can re return to the, to the, the Wankur energy because all the energies have been uh, activated so well. And these ceremonies uh, also activate the chakras. And uh, there are generally considered to be seven primary chakras. And there are blessings in each and every Wankur ceremony for at least most of the chakras, if not all the chakras. And of course, there are the lower three chakras, the, the root chakra or uh, based around the, the genitals and the uh, sits bones for sitting. And there's also the, um, the hara or the, the sacral center, which is four fingers below the belly button. And the third chakra up is a solar plexus, which represents feelings and emotions. And then as you keep working your way up in the chakra system, there's the heart chakra, and uh, the Eastern way of thinking about heart chakra uh, is engaging the mind up to the throat chakra. This is the speech center, the speaking and speech. And at the third eye, one has um, the body. Um, and it is, uh, it's, it's in the forehead. And this third eye chakra um, is about um, opening up the body. And last, but certainly not least, is the crown chakra at the top of the head. And uh, it goes from the top of the head and then 18 inches up above the head. And this is the crown chakra that gets activated during meditation practices. Also uh, activated uh, certainly at the point of awakening. And again, for everyone at end of life. Uh, consciousness leaves the body, uh, the crown chakra. So it's really important um, to be to, 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 to gain familiarity with a particular energy in order to be able to work with it well. And one, uh, teachers will invite students to work with the energy first at the outer level. And the outer is basically like a friend, as if you're meeting that energy for the first time. And you're seeing that energy through your own eyes, looking out and seeing them, that, that energy um, in third, third person. And then there's another way of practicing at the inner level where you become the, the deity and you can actually hold the implements the, that, the, that the deity is holding in the ceremony. You can hold them as if, it were, as if you were the, the deity holding these objects these, um, and, and in the leg positions of the, of the deity it's, as well. And you just become, become that deity. 
And then there's a third level uh, that one practices after a while, um, which is the secret level. And it's difficult to explain the secret level, but it really is the essence. It's sort of, if you take the the essence of this deity uh, and, and synthesize it into a pinpoint, a little bindu dot, um, so tiny you can barely see it. That is, and then one holds it in the, in the heart and uh, experiences it sort of in a flash. This is the secret essence. So there are a lot of different one cores one can attend, um, more than a hundred. Um, most of these one cores are what's considered wrathful and wrathful simply means energetic and capable of cutting and, and stopping and chopping and, and this idea of really making uh, important changes in one's life. So it's super important to have some wrathful uh, one cores. It's also important to have the peaceful one cores that are calm, that are, that create uh, grounding, that really um, give, give uh, uh, a presence to, to the being um, there could also be real a, a real um, sense of loving kindness, taking away fears um, in that kind of way, and so there's there are there are actually more of the wrathful ones, and particularly in today's society, we need the wrathful deities to sort of stop all the problems and troubles uh, in the world. But one generally works with both peaceful and wrathful uh, energies, and. Uh, deities are also um, expressed uh, in gender form. And be clear, everyone practices with all genders. And there are uh, female genders, uh, there are male genders, and there are gender neutral energies. And many fall uh, halfway in between. Some of them are different in different cultures. And the gender is really a, a very fluid um, way of describing the beings. And more than anything, it's a uh, it's a quality that each and every one of us must learn to embody, regardless of our own outward presenting uh, gender. So um, I often think of this more as yellow energy for what used to be called female and green energy for what used to be called masculine, because um, we have these energies in each of us and the more balanced we are, the better. And so uh, outward facing men may want to work with more of the feminine energies, the yellow ones, the softer ones as a way of balancing them. And so it can be deliberate to look for an energy that is not the same as your, your presenting uh, gender as a way of um, embodying a better balance. And there are also some, uh, some uh, deities that appear singly in one, just a, a solo person and, uh, and other deities that appear uh, in partnership, what's called a yab yum. And it, again, it's really useful to practice some of each. So one learns, you know, how do you show up when you're on your own by yourself? And how do you show up in relationship with someone else? And that's a very important uh, practice. Um, so uh, as always in Buddhism, the middle way encourages us to do uh, practice with energies that are that are both solo and in relationships. So we're comfortable uh, in both and have no um, no shadow sides in such a way. So I hope that explains a little bit about a, uh, a Wong Kor ceremony. Um, they are given by lamas and gurus to students. They are energetic and they will certainly get you, move you faster down the road um, to working with these particular energies. And it can be quite, quite invigorating to work with new energies and to attend these Wong Kors. So keep an eye out and look for uh, lamas and gurus offering one course ceremonies and um, attend and then do the work. One tries to do 10,000 mantras minimum, ideally in the first 24 hours, at least in the first uh, 72 hours after a one course ceremony. That's the commitment of the student. And uh, ideally one works with that particular energy then for 100,000 mantras and visualizations and really gets a flavor of them of that energy. And once one works with um, an energy for that that long and steadily, one then learns to really know the flavor and you can choose uh, when to call upon that energy and show that energy and embody that energy yourself at any point uh, in the future.